Hello everyone, I am Narendra. In the last video, I have discussed about the chronic pain model in which I explained about the formation of energy bands in uh, solid crystals. So many things uh, I have not discussed uh, in that video. In this video, I will try to give you more details about the chronic pain model. You know, the chronic pain model mainly uh, assumed the periodic square well potential of one dimensional single crystal lattice. If suppose this is one dimensional single crystal lattice and the periodic square well potential will be like this. So if you see the this periodic square well potential there are two regions. In one region the potential is zero and in the second region the potential is v equals to v naught so the electron in this potential behaves like a wave so mainly in the first region the electrons can be accommodated and this potential can act as a barrier for the electron so the Schrodinger wave equation mainly describes the energy and position of electron in space and time in this periodic potential wells. So if you write the Schrodinger wave equation in the first region, it is like this d square psi by dx square plus 2m e by h cut square psi equals to 0. Generally, the wave function is in space or in in time so the Schrodinger wave equation we are using is the time independent Schrodinger equation to minimize the complexity in getting the solutions for this Schrodinger wave equation in the second region the Schrodinger wave equation is like this here the potential is v0 so it is 2m e minus v0 by h cut square psi equals to zero so this is in the first region and this is in the second region so here the electron acts like a wave right so so here acts like a wave so according to the block theorem block theorem so the wave function of electron is the multiplication or the product of psi of x equals to a plane wave multiplied by a periodic cell function periodic cell function so this is in the direction x let us say x so the wave function of electron is the product of a plane wave multiplied by periodic cell function so this is a periodicity in the square well potentials so if you substitute this wave function in this two Schrodinger wave equations we will get the solutions and this psi of x must be and the psi the derivative of uh, wave function and the wave function must be continuous if these are not continuous the momentum and energy can be infinite so these are physically not acceptable so the wave function and the derivative of wave function must be continuous so if you substitute this and follow the boundary conditions you will get the solutions for the energy eigenvalues since the wave function varies periodically in this periodic potential wells so the energy eigenvalues are also varies periodically in k space so the energy eigenvalues varies periodically in k space right so if you plot ek diagrams energy bands in k right so these are varies periodically so if so this is the energy of a electron 
this is the energy of a electron so here you can see that this is a there are zone boundaries these are the brilliant zone pi by a minus pi by a so to understand the brilliant zone so let us take a real lattice okay here the atoms are arranged in a lattice okay let's say this is a 2d real lattice so this is a and this is b right this is real lattice so in the reciprocal lattice that means the dimension of this a and b will be different that is 2 pi by a and 2 pi by b the reciprocal of these dimensions so the reciprocal lattice will be like this so this dimension will be 2 pi by a and this is 2 pi by b so brilliant zone is the Wagner sees cell construction in this real reciprocal space reciprocal space or lattice so how do we construct this uh, Wagner C cell so let us take a origin here this is the origin so you bisect in between the origin and the nearest first atom so these are the vectors right so if you bisect okay nearest atoms first nearest atoms so this will be so this is the 2 pi by a right so this will be pi by a or minus pi by a so this is the first brilliant zone first brilliant zone so this is the first brilliant zone then the second brilliant zone will be so the second the nearest atoms will be like this one this one and this one this one so it will be like this if you bisect okay so this is the second brilliant zone second brilliant zone so in this way you can construct the weakness C cell so that will give the brilliant zones so this is a second brilliant zone 2 pi by a and this is minus 2 pi by a so in this way you will get the energy eigenvalues in k space or momentum space so these are the allowed energy bands so electrons can exist in this energy bands so these are the allowed energy bands so these are the forbidden bands allowed bands and forbidden bands this in this uh, the electron does not exist in these bands okay so only the electrons exist in this allowed bands so if you plot this ek diagram in a reducer zone if suppose this is a allowed band and this is one more allowed band ek okay so at origin where the k equals to zero right that means if you take a three-dimensional crystal kx ky and kz equals to zero that we call is a gamma point gamma point so you see in the crystal so the origin is a gamma point so in another direction that is like a x or l point there are different points in a different direction so if you take a three-dimensional crystals you can uh, easily visualize there the gamma point x and l so the energy band structure will be different in all these directions so in the semiconductors we generally see the bands at gamma point where the bands are like this so this is the bottom of the conduction band this is the top of the conduction band and this is the top of the valency band and this is the bottom of the 
valency band so in most of the semiconductor devices the bands we will show in this way so most of the semiconductors the band structure can be drawn in this way to describe the performance of the devices okay so this is the ev and this is the ec so this is the forbidden gap called the energy band gap energy band gap so if you see the most of the semiconductors like silicon germanium and gallium arsenide the band gap will be different in case of silicon it is 1.43 electron volts and in case of germanium it is 0.7 electron volt 1.15 sorry 1.15 electron volt in gallium arsenide 1.43 electron volts so this band gap will be different okay and then these are the bands where the electrons are accommodated here so if you take it zero kelvin only the electrons are accommodated in this valency band okay so this conduction band is empty so this is called the conduction band and this is called the valence band valence band so these are the bands are very important for understanding the properties of the semiconductors so i hope you understand a little bit about these band structures next time we will see with the other discussion on the semiconductors to see more videos like this and please consider subscribing